thank you for the invitation. It's wonderful to be here and what a great audience to be uh, talking to today as well. When I was doing some research on the uh, Northern Cape, I found out that the motto of the Northern Cape is strive for a better life. And I thought that was wonderful because clearly we have lots of people who are already in this mindset and just wanting to push forward and create a better world. Um, so I'm going to talk first of all about personal resilience. Um, but just before I do, I will say that I've been talking about resilience for quite a long time. This is not something that came up for me through COVID. It actually happened when I experienced a, um, an 8.8 .8 earthquake in southern Chile, which is where I was living. That was in 2010. And this was a tourist town. I've always worked in tourism. And the way we, we reacted to that was through collaboration, working together to move forward. And then five years later, the volcano, very live volcano, volcano in the village erupted and again our tourism was destroyed overnight and we had to rebuild forward and uh, and yeah, build our businesses back again. Right, I just saw a message there, uh, a strange accent. I am from the UK. I have just mentioned I was I was living in Chile for a long, long time, and I'm actually coming to you today from Austria, which is where I live now. Um, my, my clients are all over the world, and so with this wonderful internet, it's very easy to stay communicated. So I'm going to start, as I said, with personal resilience, because I believe that if your mindset is not there, if you are unconfident and if you're worried about taking decisions worried about the um, um, how to take how to do it then you can't move forward easily you do need to work on that confidence and have clarity to be able to take solid business decisions and so a lady that I follow very closely is a, a lady called Dr. Joan Rosenberg, and she talks about eight unpleasant feelings that we all try to avoid. And yet they happen to us every day. They flow through our bodies and we choose to make them stay by hanging on to them. Whereas if we just embrace them, acknowledge them and let them go, then we would be um, we, we would allow them to move through and be able to move on. And three of those eight unpleasant feelings are frustration, vulnerability, and helplessness. And we have all felt this in the pandemic. We feel it on a day-to-day -day basis. It's so confusing for us that things are are happening that are out of our control. And so we feel helpless, we feel vulnerable, we feel frustrated. We tend to hide those away and think, okay, you know, I, I don't want to be feeling this. And so I'm just going to push it down and push it down and push it down. And we don't acknowledge it or embrace it. And therefore it builds up and frustration can come out in all sorts of ways. So I, I encourage everyone to, to just, when you're feeling really down or feeling bad, is to just stand, breathe, embrace, stop, like Diane has just been saying, just stop for a second and breathe and try to, um, just say, OK, this is how I'm feeling right now, but it's not going to last forever, just like the pandemic won't. And that will help you when you do this on a daily basis to build the clarity and confidence that's necessary to move forward and take great business decisions. And so talking about pivoting, um, we have some great input there from Diane. She probably noticed I was nodding a lot through her talk. Um, I truly, truly believe that we can't move forward without acknowledging that we need to pivot. We, a lot of people kind of say, okay, I don't really want to put this extra work in, but we know it's so necessary that we have no choice. So we have to embrace it and move forward. What is a great way to pivot right now? to the domestic market. Now, when that hasn't traditionally been your market, this can seem like an incredibly difficult task because our clients change, our target audience changes. Of course they do. Their requirements, their concerns, their worries are all completely different. However, the move to domestic tourism, I encourage everyone to not see this as just a band-aid. It's not just a quick fix because of the COVID pandemic, it's a really, really smart move that will make your business more resilient and sustainable over time. One of the reasons for that is that if it's not a pandemic, if it's not, um, if it's not something like COVID that happens again, there will be something else. And imagine 
leading a business where you have the confidence that you can ride any other disruptions to international tourism, for example, or know that you have a database that you can reach out to to give updates or to invite them with certain offers or just to explain that things are going okay where you are despite whatever it is that is happening. And so pivoting to domestic is a super important strategy right now, but the strategy I'm going to share with you is also incredibly applicable to the international market as it returns. And so if you can create the strategy for the domestic to make your business more sustainable over time, you will also be able to easily apply this to the international market once they begin, once it begins to open up again and return. And so I'm going to help you um, understand how you can regain that confidence and control from this frustration and helplessness that everybody's feeling through what I've called a grow covery targeted email strategy. So the idea behind this is that as you grow in your knowledge and acceptance and acknowledgement of the decision and the need to pivot, that you can then recover and you can recover as you grow. Okay, and so I'm going to share my screen now. Um, let me see, there we go, one second. I should have this up, present, let me just move myself, there we go. So, is everyone seeing my screen right now? Okay. So here we go on to my grow recovery email marketing strategy. What is it? It's essentially um, a way that you can put together a sentiment survey to begin to understand the concerns of your clients. And then through a nurture strategy, an email nurturing strategy, you can address these concerns to build top of mind awareness. We want to create value for our clients. We want to understand them so that we can actually market to them in a way that doesn't feel like a salesy style marketing. It feels like you are offering them the value, the information that they want to be able to take a decision. Why? Because right now we are selling peace of mind more than ever before. We want to generate certainty. This is interesting because we have buzzwords that have come and, and kind of come up and then dropped off slightly through the, the pandemic. And one of the ones that it has sustained is, is collaboration. I must say that was that's been there through the start um, from the start and will continue. But certainty has popped up quite recently as a new buzzword because we have so much uncertainty right now. So that if we can if we are granted a way of generating certainty in our decisions or about um, options that we have, then suddenly we begin to feel more confident in taking decisions to, to be able to go and, and take a break if we feel certain that where we're going is going to be taking care of our best interests. Okay, And so the why behind an email marketing strategy like this is to generate that peace of mind and certainty and build authenticity, which equates to trust. And more than anything, we want to trust the destination where we're going. And that's a little where collaboration comes back into play, because when I choose to go somewhere within my country, I don't or I'm not going to stay in that hotel for the whole time. And so I might trust in my hotel, but through this um, nurture sequence that I will talk about in a little while, it also gives you the opportunity to talk and share um, options that there are in your destination that you, you, where you're working together with, whether it's a restaurant or an activity operator or someone else who also through you as, a, as the channel, as the voice, they, then your clients can see that they actually have trust or can have trust in the whole destination. So it's not just about, I have a hotel and I'm going to tell everybody about how great um, my service is in terms of being COVID safe. People also want to know, is it safe to come to where you are, not just to stay with you? And so by building this authenticity, uh, you also get to build trust, which is so critical right now. So what do I need to be able to effectively create a marketing, stra marketing strategy like this? Now, of course, time and commitment. Nothing happens without those two things. 
Um, you also need some graphic design software, which I will tell you about the one I use is free and an email marketing software provider too. That's somewhere where you can store your database and you can create automated emails. Then you, therefore you only have to do this once. There's a lot of time at, at the outset creating this kind of strategy, but once it's up and running, your software is automated, your emails go out according to certain triggers, and that's how you can then assure Sure that you have the time to continue nurturing and segmenting as the information comes in from your new target audience. And I've put FB there, Facebook at the bottom with a question mark. It's not necessary uh, to actually get your voice out there and get your strategy out there, but it does help. I'm talking about the paid ads. Facebook, of course, is a great, um, a great platform to be um, sharing information about your offer, which I shall talk about in a minute, but to use paid Facebook ads, it adds a different level to your strategy and it can actually create and generate much more reach, of course. Okay, so let's have a look at the how. Now, Diane has already talked about this and I think it is so interesting. A lot of people say, oh, I already know my target customer, but do you really? We saw the different elements and levels of target customers according to generations in the previous talk. But here we also want to be thinking about everything that that target customer is concerned about. So by having in your mind uh, three or four different target customers according to age or geographical location or both, then you can begin to think about what might their concerns be. So this is kind of the, the base of the strategy. You have to an, have an idea of your target customer, but you don't have to get it all right right now because as you're going to see moving forward, you're going to collate information which will help you refine and better define the, uh, the, the identity of your target customers so that you can better serve them. So step two is define your offer. An offer can be something as simple as an ebook, but one thing that has been proven has been a really, really great way to gain much more detailed information is a traveler sentiment survey. Now, you can send a survey out and you think, oh, well, who's going to do this? You know, why would they help me? But you can also give away a prize that could be a couple of nights stay at your hotel or at your property or your destination. And this is also a great opportunity for collaboration because there is nothing more attractive than a multifaceted offer, a multifaceted prize. Like Opa said um, a couple of talks back, if you put together um, three or four different people or different companies, a hotel, a restaurant, an activity provider, whatever it is that defines what there is available in your um, or embodies what's available in your destination. Then you have a wonderful offer there. So if you say, hey, we've got this six night stay available, it includes this, this and this, take part in this traveler sentiment survey and you will be um, placed into a draw where you will then um, have a chance to win this prize. OK, so it's much more attractive. And then, so therefore you're going to get the surveys in through your um, through this um, email marketing software. And you're going to be able to look at your target client in closer detail and understand what their concerns are, because you're asking them those questions. OK, and then moving on to the technical side of it, how do you actually get all this out there? Well, you need a unique landing page you, that can be a page on your website which is not necessarily published within your site, it's just created there, or it can be a standalone landing page, which can be created for free in a lot of the email marketing software provider software, okay? Then you need to pop in a thank you, a success page, whatever it's called in your email marketing software. And this is what the client receives or the person receives when they pop in their name and email on your landing page to say, yep, yeah, I'm going to do this survey or I want your ebook or whatever it is, they get this page. And this is a wonderful opportunity for you to not just say, hey, thanks for this, but thanks for this. Hey, have you seen this about my property? 
or about my destination. And you get to add in some links there, whether those are to Facebook groups that you have or your own Facebook page or whether it's to your check availability button if you have a property. It's another step to actually get someone to convert or at the very least to learn more about you and your property. Then the email, this is a step five, the email that actually goes out. So once somebody has signed up, they get a thank you page and then they get an email from you that says, here's the survey or here's the ebook or here's what I'm sending you. This email can have your logo, it can have some text in there, it should be simple, not too heavy. And that's what's then received by the client. They then open that email and they become part of your database. Now, to move forward, you can add in a seven mail, seven mail nurture sequence. Now, the reason I've put this to step six, because clearly it's something that needs some time to work on. But the reason it's at this stage is because you want to take the concerns. You need some time in between to take all those concerns and the information that your um, clients have given you, or your target customers have given you through the survey to work in that, to answer those concerns within your nurture sequence. So an example of this is that someone could be talking about in the survey that they're really uncomfortable about traveling to a destination because they're not sure about the um, hygiene or the, yeah, the sanitation or, or you know, wh whatever is related to, to the hygiene. And then you could address this in your nurture sequence by saying, hey, look here at this um, protocol that we've updated, and this is our own protocol, this is our destination's protocol, this is what we see on a daily basis happening in our destination to keep you and the people who live there safe. This nurture sequence could and should also include information about your destination, of course. Um, it can also include something a little off the wall. So a trend that I've detected in the last few months is that a lot of friends who were, were perhaps talking about travel are now talking about doing home refurbs because we're all stuck at home and we can't, you know, we, we can't actually enter into this travel phase right now. Internationally, I mean, of course, domestically is, is easier. But if you could, if you have a property where you have some great, um, um, design within your property, you could, you know, talk about how you came to the, the color schemes or you know, add in something that get, that grabs attention. So you show in, you're showcasing your property, but you're actually pitching it in a way that's getting people's attention by talking about something that is of importance to them right now. So you're thinking about changing the color scheme in your living room. Hey, look what I did here in my restaurant or in, my, in the bedrooms in my property, for example. So thinking outside the box to grab attention, to gain trust and to be, um, and be authentic um, is really crucial to this nurture sequence. One actual um, other element is around mail number five, you could pop in something that is, um, you know, it could be an, uh, a discount to your property or it could be a, a bigger destination ebook or something. And if you can see then that your client has downloaded that, you can segment them, you can put them into a different list because they are a bit more of a hotter lead. Yeah, they're a much warmer lead because they've shown great interest. They're still there after um, mail five interacting with you according to what you're sending out. And so this is a great way to then be able to create a, a different sequence, which is just for those people. Um, this all sounds like a lot of work. And of course, up front it is. But once it's done, because it's automated, you can then um, leave it running. OK, and so don't panic about the amount of work that goes into this right now. And then step seven, you need to get on with marketing your landing page. So this is where your blogs come into play, your Facebook group, your own Facebook page, your email signature. This is a hugely overlooked place. Your email signature should have a link to this with a very, very short few word description about what it is, because that's what people are receiving from you when they get an email. OK, so if you have it there, that's brilliant. And Facebook paid ads is also a great way to extend your reach. Um, and then moving on to step eight, you nurture, you nurture, you nurture, you understand, you read, you address concerns and you continue to segment so that you have different um, people with different 
uh, worries, concerns and needs in certain lists that you can begin then to address in different ways. This is where the international market steps into because you can also create the same strategy specifically for the international market and have an international segment, which of course requires a very different set of information than your domestic travellers do. Okay, and then the last step is review, analyze, segment, segment, segment. That goes through, it's a, a, a trend all the way through this and create new content, personalize and repeat. Personalization is absolutely key. And I also agree that not everybody um, reacts as well to email as other people, but these email marketing softwares allow you to include triggers that set off an SMS to be sent to someone if possible, if, if, if that's something that you, you believe that client is, is looking for. Again, depending on generation, that goes right back to step one and looking at and understanding your customer, okay? And so I have a case study on this. Um, I was began talking about this quite a few months ago to my email database, which I created on the basis of creating free resources back in April last year when COVID first hit, specifically for small independent hotel, lodge, b and &B, um, uh, uh, hostel and restaurant owners and they were widely widely shared and so I built up my own email database based on those resources one of whom was Andrew from Ant Bear Lodge in the Drakensberg Mountains now we were coming to and fro in with some emails and you know I kind of proposed this idea of the email marketing strategy back in um was around August, I think. No, no, a little bit later, September, late September. And so he had zero, zero email subscribers at that point. And then we were in touch. He was, we were you know, working out how to move forward for him. And he updated me in March and he now has 12,000 email subscribers in four months on his database. This is incredible. You can take a closer look at the case study. If you go to my blog there, that's the title of the case study underneath. Um, and Andrew is also available and very, very happy to share information about how he did this. You can read more in the blog, but you can also um, contact him directly. His, his details are in there, um, are in the, the blog itself. And he's working right now on one for the Kwasulu Natal area. So they're replicating what happened in Drakensberg for a different region. And he is very much working in collaboration with different owners, regions, property managers to be able to, to take his email marketing um, platform, his email marketing strategy much bigger and much further. OK, so my idea here is through the collaboration I just mentioned is to grow to recover and recover as you grow, because without the opportunity or the or the idea that growth is, is what's going to move you forward, then we just aren't, we're not going to get there. So we have to understand that growth is critical to this. So I'm going to stop sharing now and hopefully then you can come back to me. There we go. So very quickly moving on to perseverance. Um, it's about knowing your why. And I know Diane already mentioned this, which is again why I was nodding in her presentation. Knowing your why is so critical to this. You are, this is not about you. This is customer centric right now. We need to be focusing on our customers and understanding that what they need from us is certainty, trust, peace of mind, and personalized information. So by using a strategy like this, you get to segment so that you can offer to the best of your ability, personalized information. You must make a calendar date for yourself to persevere with this. You have to review your grow recovery strategy. You really do have to be consequent with that. Constant baby steps is what will take you forward. You can tweak, you can move, you can do anything with this strategy once it's up and running. But the point is just to get it out there because without it, then you are still going to be looking for different ways to market and move forward. It's not a quick fix, but it is. Um, it, it grants you a focus to build forward. We don't want to even build back anymore. We don't even want to build back better. We want to build forward better. And so I think that's a really interesting way to do it.
So my last comment now is just about packing up. I'm not obviously going to go into any detail here about financials or whether, you know, everyone really does kind of know when it's the time. But one thing could be that if you are um, have listened to this about creating an email marketing strategy and think, wow, this is way too much of a chore. I'm not I'm not in for up for doing this or if you're kind of a bit more motivated and excited about it and you can see the value then that can give you a little insight into kind of how um, motivated you are yourself to, to get on with it and move forward but I'd like to just entertain a couple of questions that I have helped me to define what it is that I do on a daily basis that brings me joy um, I don't want for myself and my own life to be tied to a, work, a job or work that I don't enjoy. We all deserve better than that. And so there are a couple of questions that I think are really interesting to just gain some insights about what naturally flows through you. They might sound a little holistic, but just bear with me. The first one is, what did you absolutely love doing as a child? And the second one is, what do people frequently come to you to ask your advice about? Now, if you can just sit with those questions for a minute and yeah, just just sit with them and have a think about what they, what they mean to you, you might come up with something really interesting. For example, I must have been the most annoying child because whenever my parents talked about going on a trip, three weeks before I was planning what was going in my case, a week before I was packing, the day before I was choosing my sweets and my toys that were going to go in the car, I had a bag for the car, I had a day pack I had a bag for the boot I was so into travel I was so annoying with it but it's very clear that it naturally flowed through me and so there was no surprise when I eventually began working as a tour leader in South America I set up my own backpackers place I moved on to manage a luxury lodge and I then did a master's in international responsible tourism management and now here I am talking about business resilience and so people often, as a result of that, came to me to talk about or to ask my advice on not just what to, where to travel to. It wasn't as simple as that. It was more about how to create businesses that stand the test of time, resilient businesses. That became my kind of signature um, conversation. Um, and I think it's very interesting to think, you know, what do people come to me about? If, some, if a friend of mine gets asked a question, and then they actually say to that person, oh, don't ask me about that. Ask Sarah, because she is so good at talking about that. You know, So if you can just incorporate the answers to those two questions into thinking about how, you're, how you want your life to look, then that can give you an insight as to whether you're in the right industry or not. And if you're not in the right industry, then if you don't feel you are, then there are some this might give you some insights into where you could pivot towards to give yourself the joy that we all deserve. Okay, so that's it. I'm all done. Let's not settle with just bouncing back. Let's try and focus on building forward, bouncing forward. Let's be, let's nurture our own growth recoveries. Let's just, just know that we all have it in ourselves and it just needs us to embrace those unpleasant feelings. We need to just get on with that pivot. We need to do the time and commitment to get there. And we have some strategies here that can be very well adapted to your needs right now. And there's a PDF that I created that will be sent out to everyone. And it has some links at the bottom and the steps that I uh, went through on those slides. So thank you very much for having me and I hope that has been of great use to you all. Have a great day.